You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. And now, TSPN's Amador This Week's Out and About. This local television coverage is proudly brought to you Good by... Good morning, Amador County. I'm Frank Halverson, and with me today is Troy Bauer, the CEO of the Amador County Fair. And we're going to do our little annual pre-fair walk-around right now. You know, we're about... Just a little over a week and a half out from Fair Troy starts the 26th, that's July 26th through the 29th, the 74th Amador County Fair, and we're looking forward to another great fair this year. Barn in the USA, it's going to be a great time, come on out and have some fun. For those of you that don't know Born, Barn in the USA, well Born in the USA was the boss Bruce Springsteen of course, big hit for him, that's the theme of our fair this year, Barn in the USA, and we're going to take you through the grounds here in just a few minutes, so why don't you come along? Come on down. All right, Troy, we're, you know, actually right here is one of my favorite places of the fair, and hopefully those of you who have never been here, you take the opportunity to come over here because, you know, no matter what the temperature is anywhere else on the ground, it always seems to be cooler right here. A little cooler, a little calmer. You can come out here and relax, and it's a little more shade here. Uh, just wonderful landscape uh, in our koi pond that just looks so marvelous every year. We have a, a couple of family comes in here, the Frank Tremaine family, and they come in here and they take care of this koi all year long, and they've just made a, a tremendous difference out here to the Amador County Fair. Yeah, I love the koi pond. We're standing right in between the koi pond and the shade gardens, right in front of the Gem and Minerals building. Talk to us about what goes on in that building a little bit. Gem and Minerals, uh, rocks and lapidary, there'll be jewelry uh, that's on uh, display and exhibited. It's, it's competitive in there and you can uh, buy some of their jewelry and the, the metal work that, they peep, that the people do and uh, it's for sale in there. And along with the floriculture, we got a really nice uh, floricultural exhibit bonsai arrangements, uh, just a lot of fun, and that building happens to be air-conditioned. There you go. Yeah. There's a nice place to cool off and take a look at some of the uh, gems and minerals that have come from this county. And, you know, it, going way back, we had a whole lot of activity going on in the gold mines around here, and all of a sudden, Amador County is kind of in the forefront of that news a little bit with Sutter Gold reopening. So here's an opportunity for you to not only take a look at those exhibits and some of the items that are for sale, but also it kind of leads us into where we're heading next. So don't go away. Stay with us. All right, folks, we've moved to a different area now. Now, I have to tell you, this is an area sometimes that gets overlooked by a lot of people, and I, and, and I get that. You know, you're all excited. You come through the front gate. You're ready to crash through and start with all the excitement and the fun, and maybe you're heading for the carnival or heading for your first corn dog of the season. But don't forget to take a look to your right, right when you come into the big building on the property. And there's all kinds of activities that happen here from opening day till the close on Sunday. Troy, tell us about that. Shop till you drop, right in there. That's where it's all happening. You, we have vendors. We have uh, the fudge people. There's all kinds of things going on in there. Just come on in and have some fun and look around at our commercial exhibitors. You can see... Uh, different satellite dish people there's some jewelry there's various there's all kinds of stuff in there it's just fun yeah it's a, it's a great building to take a little time out walk around cool off a little bit and there's really some cool things in there a lot of our commercial exhibitors are from the area the different cities or a lot of the unincorporated areas, they'll put on a little display kind of showing their signature, if you will, and sure. what they, who they are and what they represent. So it's a nice little overview of the areas in the county. But other than that, outside of the building, there's a lot of other things that go on starting Friday night. What Friday happens night. Friday night right here? Friday night, wine tasting, all the commercial wine exhibitors, uh, you get to taste the gold medal, the award-winning wines at the Amador County Fair competition. One of the very premier competitions in California, I think, and some of the best wines that represent the Shenandoah Valley and Amador County. You know, the Amador County or Shenandoah Valley Appalachian, if you will, they've been designated as their own appellation several years ago. Mm -hmm. And as far as the recognition that these wines continue to get, not only on a local basis, but on a statewide basis, and even a national basis in some of these national and worldwide wine shows that we're really proud 
putting out a very, very special product right here in Amateur County, and it gives you an opportunity to come by, have some hors d'oeuvres, and taste all of these wonderful wines that are made right here. Yep, there should be over 40 winemakers displaying their, their products out here. $25 gets you uh, admission to it. Uh, we open our doors at 7 a.m. or 7 p.m., thank you, on Friday. 7 p.m. Friday. You do need a ticket for this. Now, I would encourage you to get those tickets early because this event normally sells out. You get your commemorative glass. You'll be able to taste all the wines from the region that are here with us as well as hors d'oeuvres. Very special event. Every Friday night starts at 7 o'clock. Make sure you come by and experience another just piece of gold from that we have right here in this county. Right here, Frank, and don't forget, uh, Saturday, Sunday, we have our Farms of Amador exhibit out here. You're going to see the local uh, farmer's market products here, uh, bee display, honey, olive oils, uh, a lot of nice, really, exhibits here, stuff that you could sample, the farmer's uh, products for Amador County. Uh, also, uh, we do our microbrew area over here Saturday and Sunday, too. So that all begins at 11 a.m. And so come on out. We've got, we're going to have some fun out here. A lot of activity right here in this spot from Thursday all the way through Sunday. So make sure you go into the building, check out our commercial exhibitors. You can buy taffy or candy or jewelry or all kinds of special things inside there. Taste some of the county's best wines as well as some local brews and the brew competition. And best of farmers, if you haven't been to a farmer's market here in the county, you probably haven't had a good tomato in a long time unless you're growing it yourself because I guarantee you they're a heck of a lot better than you can buy on the shelf. You got that right. All right, so make sure you stop by here and see what all what's going on in the four days of the Amateur County Fair. We're going to continue through. Well, look who I have here. I am standing next to royalty, 2011 Miss Amador, Kylie Ohm. Hi, Kylie. Hello. <laughs> Kylie's here to help us out with our little fair preview this year. And so, Kylie, tell me a little bit about the experience you had last year through the pageant. What being Miss Amador was like this year? Being Miss Amador 2011 was such a great experience. I got to meet a whole bunch of people. And, I mean, just going through the pageant, it's not as easy as it looks and being able to be successful at it and then you get to be the hostess of the Amador County Fair and you get to go through everything, you get to meet everyone and it's just a great experience and little kids look up to you and it's fun being a, being a princess for a while. Okay, absolutely. It's always nice to have a little crown on your yeah. head, huh? A little special recognition. Everybody kind of, yeah. all the kids kind of ooh and ah a little bit, huh? Yeah, Here comes the queen. Sparkle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's terrific. So what is there any one particular thing that really stuck out in your mind as uh, either participating or after the fact and being part of Miss Amador? You know, just being, the whole experience was great. You got to meet all the girls and then going through the fair, uh, you as Miss Amador, you to be, you and your court judge the Junior Livestock Beauty Contest. It's a contest where little kids make uh, costumes and they parade their animals and you get to go around fair on the tractors at the uh, over on the engineering side of the fair and you know you just get to meet everyone get to wave and you get to see him in our county yeah and everybody wants to meet miss amador <laughs> huh that's fun okay well you didn't mention part of your favorite and I know, as far as the crowd, it's always part of their favorite, and that's the big mud dive. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's actually, it, it looks very really easy, and it hurts. There's a lot of gravel in there, but it, it is a lot of fun. It's You go through all week looking graceful and pretty, and then you get to go and mess around. So it's, that is a lot of fun. <laughs> well, I know that's always a big crowd pleaser. It, Everybody's fun. always looking for the, the, the Miss Amador and her court to take the big dive yeah. into the mud. Now, yeah. you've been involved in the Amador County Fair for a number of years. Yes. Uh, this will be my 11th year in 4-H and my fourth year in FFA. And tell me some of the things that... that uh, are your favorite part, not necessarily of Miss Amador, but of the fair, the things that all over the years that, that stick out in your mind as special? You know, I live basically in the livestock barns. I've shown animals ranging from chickens to steers, and, you know, I know everyone in there. We've made a lot of friends, and it's, it's a tight-knit community over in the livestock barns, and it'll spread out to the whole fair. So, I mean, 
just the people probably be my favorite. It really is just a big old reunion, it isn't is. it? It's a four-day Amador County reunion. <laughs> Every year, yes. Yeah, for sure. People that you don't see necessarily all during the year, you can almost be sure that you're going to see them here at the fair. Absolutely. Well, Kylie, thank you very much for being with us today. We look forward to seeing you at this year's fair. Of course, Thursday night is the big pageant where you will be passing the baton yes. to the newly crowned Miss Amador. <laughs> yes, it is. On Thursday at 8 o'clock, there will be seven girls that are going to compete, so come on out. Terrific. We hope to see everybody there, and we certainly appreciate you helping us out today, Thank Kylie. You. Thank, Thank you. you okay, we've moved just a little bit from our last spot over in between the koi ponds and the shade gardens right into this one-of-a-kind exhibit that we have here at Amador County Fair. Now, we talk about how many different exhibits that you will only find here at Amador yeah. County and no place else, and I guarantee that. And right here, we are standing in front of the Pokerville Gold Mine. There's actual gold in this gold mine right now. You can see it. It's in there. This is a working gold mine that was uh, relocated from a location here in Amador County, reconstructed by volunteers. You know, when we go back in history and, and talk about the beginnings of California, Gold mining was, was what really turned the thing here, and that's what we have on display here. Go West young man, right? Go that's West, what yeah. pushed everybody here to California, the thrill of finding gold. Yeah. And you have the opportunity to do that right here in this gold mine. You know, kids can come and actually pan for gold right here. Is that correct? Oh, it's just so much fun out here. You know, everything is hands-on out here. You can come out here and experience gold panning and, and watch the old steam engines, and it's just a lot of fun. <laughs> You know, and one other thing, and I, and I would be remiss without mentioning this, a couple years ago we had... You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. And I would be remiss without mentioning this. A couple years ago, we had a dedication here, and there's a plaque sitting here next to the gold mine, and in memory of Tom Garamendi um, for everything he did, did for the preservation of mining in our area and history. Tom was one of the founders, and uh, I would be remiss without uh, uh, mentioning that. But this is another one of those very, very special exhibits that we have only here at the Amador County Fair. Yeah, you know, so many families have contributed so much to this county, and that is represented here at the Amador County Fair. I don't know any pl place else that has a collection quite like we have here. It is very unique, so let's keep talking about it. Let's All move right. on. Okay. All right, we've moved just a short way here. I guess it would be to the north right here in front of another very special area standing in front of the plaque that this area was named after Johnny Manicero who was a longtime uh, board of director member what do we got here Troy well you know uh, these agricultural associations the Amador County Fairs the 26th District Agricultural Association our roots go clear back to the beginning of the California statehood when they created agricultural societies and the whole idea with that was to get people together to uh, learn how, what the, how to do agriculture in California. Remember in 1850 there was no agriculture in California. You had the, the Miwok Indians or the Native Americans. You had the Spaniards with their cattle primarily for hides gold mining and so they needed to figure out a way to bring people together to develop the technology recruit talent to to develop what is the world's leading agricultural producer and right here you will see those technology that they built and created right here that's how they generated a lot of their power it's how yeah. they operated and worked a lot of their equipment the old equipment right. first with the steam engines that are here now the the group that comes here is there's a large uh, organization that travel around and just like to show off kind of some of their old equipment and I think this is one of the largest displays of that old technology around isn't it? I believe it is you know and it's so diverse you'll see the pumps that were built and created over in the uh, San Joaquin Delta out there you'll see uh, the technology that they used to uh, remove the hulls from walnuts back then uh, just so many the uh, tractors that they developed, the technology that was created that built California's agriculture is right here on display. It's the real thing. This is the stuff, the original stuff, and it works, and it's all volunteers. And of course, one of my favorites that always here, and everybody says, what's that? 
Well, it's a manure spreader, silly. Didn't you know that? Huh? Everybody's favorite, the manure spreader that they've got set up with, with uh, benches in the back that yeah. they ride. And during the tractor parade, which they have twice a day, that starts right here and goes right down the midway. And you'll have an opportunity to see a lot of those old pieces of equipment that were used a long, long time ago and helped us really become a productive state in a lot of ways. Right here, right here. So we're going to spread the word right here. There you go. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> All right, now we've moved over another one of these, and I, I get tired of saying this, but it is so true. Another one of the very, very unique exhibits we have here at the Amador County Fair, and that is our old-time sawmill. This is the real deal. You know, uh, we go back to the beginning of California and, and how California was built, and it was built with, with this ma machine right here, and I think they uh, found this out in Sutter creek somewhere and unearthed it and, and take it out here and rebuilt it and this is the real deal a steam powered uh, sawmill you know bill braun and his organization have continued to add on to this year after year after year and and i think you're right i think they found it it was pretty much submerged or buried in a creek bed or something that they unearthed and they keep adding to this and you know now they they do everything with lasers and computers and they're able to get the most utilization out of a log and and all these computers tell you how to do it well this is how they used to do it way before computers and if you look at these logs over here they're all marked Doug fur uh, 16s and I believe that's probably the length of the log but the way they move these into the blade and they set it with these I don't even I don't know the name of the equipment and then it's all driven by a big belt and 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 they measure it by hand through this this equipment and then run it through here and it slides down on these rollers and one of the neat things about this they actually use the wood that's cut here on the fairgrounds yeah you know it's kind of our own little sawmill here it has uh, helped us build the Benny Brown arena and repair a lot of stuff he also does a lot of community service projects for uh, uh, California parks around the state and so there's a lot of different uses this is a, a real working sawmill that that produces a product that's used here in Amador County and across the state really a piece of history right here and they actually cut wood during the fair at different intervals during the day so make sure you come by and see that I think this is a new addition this year I look here it looks like they've got a conveyor belt that sits underneath where they're cutting this wood that takes the the sawdust it looks like yeah. and puts it all into a bin there then they can take that and we're able to utilize that in other places on the grounds. Yeah, so they're constantly uh, improving this thing and building on it and keeping true to the history of it all too. So uh, it works, it's real, it's right here, come out and you can smell the, the, the new wood being cut, it, it is quite an experience. It really is. So they usually, right when they're getting ready to start, they whoop, give the old whistle a blow. So wherever you are on the fairgrounds, when you hear that, it's time to run over here and take a look. Come on over and have a look. Another great exhibit here at the Amador County Fair, like so many others. We're just about there, folks. Don't leave us yet. We'll be right back. All right, we moved right over here. and. I got to tell you, one of my favorite spots here underneath this big, beautiful oak tree, I think this is one of the most beautiful trees on in the facility, and one thing that we're known for is trees and grass and flowers and all the wonderful things, and this tree right here is one of my favorites. We're standing right in front of the Rotary Wine Booth, but we're also standing right here on Picnic Hill where we have free, free. entertainment every night every night so this is where uh, kind of the, the better entertainment is it's all good out here but this is uh, a little bit of out of county stuff so we have uh, on Thursday night our Celtic Rock Tempest you can see a bunch of grown men with uh, skirts and uh, it should be a great show rock uh, Celtic Rock Band they're Celtic or Celtic Celtic. Okay. Celtic. I'm with you. I Celtic. thought they were a basketball it's, team in Boston, but, it's, but it's, I'll go with, I'll it's, go with it's it. Celtic. That's, that's okay. It's okay. Celtic. <laughs> and then uh, Friday night, uh, Spasmatics, uh, where nerds go wild. You'll see these guys. They're fresh from a, uh, a gig with uh, Drew Barrymore at her wedding, and so they're always a lot of fun. They're just wild and crazy guys. And a lot of 80s stuff. A lot What's of 80s the? music and uh, just fun. And then uh, Chris Gardner Band, you know, we have our country music out here. Chris Gardner with uh, compliments our rodeo out here. And then uh, that would be Sunday night. We finish with a blues band, Max Cabello Jr. There you go. And this guy's a real up-and-comer kind of a band and uh, musician and very, very talented, very good. And come on out. It's all free up here on Picnic Hill. 
enjoy the Rotary Wine Booth and uh, kind of cool off right here. Right. So for all of those concerts, all that free music here, of course, the Rotary Wine Booth is open all during the fair. Uh, the Lions Club also has a beer concession up here. But one thing i got to tell you, because the... Rotary Wine Garden here. Yeah, they serve great wine and do a lot of wonderful things here. But I got to tell you, it's an awful nice place to come and just get off your feet a little bit, sit down in the shade. You know, they've got the water running behind it. They've done a great job over the years of upgrading this area. Um, and right behind us here, and it's nice and cool. There's pavers on the ground, so it stays a little cooler in the shade. Great place to take five, enjoy award-winning award -winning Amador County wine. So make sure you stop by the Rotary Wine Garden. We're going to walk right back down to the Midway, take a look at Frontier Town and maybe some beautiful flowers, and we're just about done. So come on with us. All right, we've moved around a little bit, and we're here in the Miwok Village, and with me is Sam Baugh. Hi, Sam. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. We've seen you here for a number of years now. You've been a big part of putting this all together. Tell us where we are and what we're looking at right now. Well, this is Miwok Village, almost in the center of the fairgrounds. And right now we're here repairing some of the bark houses that's been here for, what, almost 20 years, I guess. So it's time to rebuild them a little bit, straighten them out, and getting everything ready for the fair. Yeah, so in the middle here, right behind us, this is the a version of what you call a roundhouse. Is that correct? Well, it's not really a roundhouse. It's to give you an idea what a roundhouse looks like, because a roundhouse is a church, and we wouldn't build it here so because it's open to the public, and so we made like a roundhouse gazebo type thing. And it's so we can have events throughout the year here, and it gives you the, the look of a roundhouse. Uh, the, the rock would be all the way around if it was. Oh, okay. Except there, for the doorway. Okay, ter terrific. Very good. And and there are activities that are going on all four days of the fair here that kids mm -hmm. can come by, whoever wants to come and participate. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, Indian Education is here. The State Parks is here. The Sierra Native American Council is here. We have basket demonstrations. The women are showing how to make baskets, and we have uh, stuff for the kids to do to make uh, necklaces, uh, pouches, and leather work and soapstone work and bead work and all that's free just come bring your kids and turn it into a daycare almost here yeah you know? well I know it's a great opportunity to, for the kids to take a little time out get out of the Sun get some education learn about some of the history that is so so rich here in Amador County by coming over here and then being able to participate whether it be through making beads or little bracelets or whatever the case may be and all of the or most of the materials that we see planted around us here if if I understand it right are indigenous materials that are used for the basket making and that type of thing? Right. What you'll see here is bunch of grass and uh, different redbud and different plants. You see them in their natural form and a lot of people don't understand what they are and they cut them down or whatever at home. But these are all natural plants. Some are medicine, some are used for baskets. And the ladies will, that are doing the basket demonstrations will show you. They'll show you how you can see them in their natural form and how they process them and what it takes to put them into a basket. It's a lot of work, a lot of time, but the baskets will last for hundreds of years if you take care of them right you know and they are absolutely beautiful I mean the, the craftsmanship that goes into these baskets are, are just really incredible and every year when I come I remember I mean my kids who are now 26 years old mm -hmm. I remember them being here and making their little putting their little beads together and making their little bracelets so this is a display that has been here for years and years and years and you continue to upgrade it every year and you know, I know we talk about a lot of uniqueness of this fair, but I can say that this is a very, very special and unique display that you will not find anywhere else that I can think of. No, we've had offers to go to different fairs in different counties. And You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN county and down south but we in Sacramento but we chose just to stay here local we represent all the tribal people in Amador County and uh, and we believe in educating the community on uh, like the natural plants you know and stuff like that or you can get any information you need from us right here places to go to get education and you have the state park 
who can tell you all about Grinding Rock up there. To, right, the Chaussee, right. Chaussee up mm -hmm. there just uh, in between Volcano and Pine Grove. Right. So there's people here that can answer your questions. It's a great place to take a little break, educate your kids, have them learn a little bit more history about this county, and one of the very unique things about the fair. Sammy, we certainly appreciate all the efforts that you've put in for the many, many, many years in helping keep this display something very special and a part of our fair. Well, thank you. It's, it's been an honor, and, uh, and I enjoy it. Thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you at the fair. All right. Thanks. All right, we've moved just a little bit away from Miwok Village, and we're, we've got a couple areas here. Last year, I think was the first year we did this, we called it Hammock Hill, was it? Husband's Hammock Hill. You know, everything out here is it's all about mom. The Amador County Fair is all about mom. So we've created a 49er kids town area over here. The idea is uh, some nice uh, tables and, and shaded area for mom to relax. And a lot of kids activities over there will be our 49er kids town activities. So sandboxes, little things for the little guys. You know, it's all free. They can come in and, and just have a great time and burn off some energy. And we'll have a puppet show over here, one of the finest puppet shows, I think, in California. It will be right here. And then uh, the Jumbo Shrimp Circus will be happening over here in this area. And the kids can learn how to juggle and stilt walk and stuff. Stilt <laughs> <laughs> walk, really? Still, that's okay. right. <laughs> and then uh, over here, we have a husband's hammock hill. So the idea is that the husbands can take a little break over here. We're working on getting a TV to show the uh, Olympics. Olympics over here. So mom can keep a keep cool, relax a little bit, and keep an eye on everybody right here. Perfect. And certainly we would also let moms probably participate in those hammocks also because we are an equal opportunity employer. So moms or dads, yeah. but it's a pretty cool spot. You know, there's a lot of things for the kids to do right here where you can kind of maybe get off your feet for a few minutes. The kids got a lot of free stuff to do here and play. Right over to my left is the Miwok Village where they can go up and make some beads or do whatever they want while well, you can sit here and have a little shade and maybe just a little quiet time while you're right here at the fair. Fair, yeah, and uh, you know we spend a lot of time out here at the fair, and uh, we know families need a little place to kind of relax and recharge, and so they can go back and, and just see the whole fair. Absolutely, there's a lot of things to do. We hope you come early and come often and stay late. So let, we're going to continue to move on, and uh, so let's go see another part of this beautiful facility that we call the Amador County Fair. Exactly. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm here this morning with Susie Reynolds, and you know fair time is a lot of different things for a lot of different people and you know some people think about the fair as being the carnival and corn dogs and the rodeo but there's a lot of other things going on here at the Amador County Fair that everybody can be involved in. Susie can you tell us about some of those things? Absolutely I've enjoyed entering the special competitions, home arts competitions. Last year I won this fantastic uh, blue ribbon for my potato salad and my daughter and I have both enjoyed entering a lot of the special competitions, uh, baking, uh, potato salad, uh, sewing. So there's just a ton that we can do. Um, it, it makes the fair so much fun just to compete and, and you're part of it. The special competitions are done on, on Saturday and Sunday afternoons. You come in and, and you bring uh, every year there's something different and so you, I, uh, as soon as that uh, premium book comes out I, I look through it and I see what the special competitions are that year and I go hmm okay it's usually there's a pie there's cookies and then there's a savory so uh, it really you know hits all the markers there's a lot that people can enter I've entered the baking competitions before and uh, there's uh, a lot of women and men with the uh, canned goods preserved foods uh, beautiful uh, handmade crafts and so there's a lot that people can check out that premium book and and it makes it just fun and interesting to come to the fair. Well, there's just an awful lot of things here that give everyone an opportunity to be involved. We're standing here in front of the Spur Emporium building where a lot of those uh, competitions and displays take place. Everything from children's art, there's so many different categories. Fresh vegetables, you grow them in your garden. So you can utilize your yard, you can utilize your kitchen, you can utilize your hands in artwork, your camera and photographs. There's so many different things, so many ways that are available for 
everybody to be involved in the fair. And so check it out because just participating is yeah. part of the fun, isn't it? And you get your kids involved. My kids, well, particularly my daughter enjoyed since she was little. They have special competitions for the kids. And I remember one year she decorated a high-heeled shoe. So they're just like with the adults, they have special uh, treats for the kids. And so you look at that premium book and, and one of the first things we always do, still do, and always did when we came to the fair, we turn in, go into this Spur Emporium and check out all the kids' uh, crafts and competitions, their artwork, and it, boy, the kids love it. They love to see their artwork displayed on the walls, and it just gets the whole family involved. Well, make sure you take some time out while you're here at the Amateur County Fair. Come into these buildings, like the Spur, Spur Emporium building, and see some of these special competitions. You'll realize how very, very talented the people of Amateur County are. So don't be afraid. Jump right in. The water's nice and warm, and we look forward to everybody participating. We're going to continue on our tour. Okay, we've moved down the midway just a bit, and we're we're sitting here in front of Pokerville Hall, and with me is... Joan Smith from Sierra Gold Quilt Guild. And Joan, tell us a little bit about Sierra Gold Quilt Guild. That's correct. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we, behind me is the large, we call it an opportunity quilt. The name is Desert Trails. It was designed by one of our members, Annalee Belden. It was sewn by a number of our um, guild members, and another guild member, Susan Huntington, uh, machine quilted it. We have these quilts to make money, to run the guild, and to um, be part of the community by donating to various organizations like the Sheriff's Department, Operation Care, Bundles of Joy, uh, Kit Carson, a convalescent hospital. We also donate to the Interfaith um, Food Bank. And you can buy tickets for this quilt at the fair this year at Pokerville Hall. One ticket is a dollar, six tickets are five dollars. Okay, so as part of course, inside of Pokerville Hall is the big quilt, all the quilts that have been entered in the fair and the competition, and they will be judged and awards will be given. But the opportunity quilt gives everyone an opportunity to participate. And that's what we've been kind of talking about that today, about how everybody can participate in the fair. And it's just a little more fun when you're participating. Absolutely. Yeah, so here's, a, here's an opportunity for everybody to uh, purchase a ticket, and the winner will end up with the quilt? Absolutely. And the reason for buying the quilt, tickets. Okay, so the quilt is your prize. Beautiful, beautiful handmade quilt. Is that yes, correct? That's correct? And all of these quilts that you'll see in here are all handmade. Is that correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And mostly from guild members or other people outside of your guild also in a problem? Oh, outside our guild, throughout the county, throughout other counties, I understand. Yeah, so it's a, it's a big competition Absolutely. that uh, I'm sure your organization looks forward to every year. Mm -hmm. You've got a couple other people with you with uh, holding their handiwork here. Who is this? Cookie Braunschweig. I'm I, also from Sierra Gold Quilt. Okay, great, Cookie. And th this quilt you made uh, that you're entering in the fair yeah. this year? No, this was my first applique quilt that I made many years ago. Okay. And you've continued to yes. obviously yes. quilt for a number of years? Yes. Yes. How long have you been in the guild? Oh, probably about 14 or 15 years. Oh, okay. Well, no newcomer to this game for you, huh? No, and it's open to all new members if oh, anyone's interested. Th that's terrific. Another beautiful example of some of the things that will be displayed here. Make sure you stop into Pokerville Hall. We have one other member, I believe also of the Guild over here. Julie Broderson. And Julie, this is one that you did. Will this be in competition this year or was this no, just one I you did? I made this several years ago and so it's not eligible for the fair this year. But it's one of my first applique quilts as well. I have to tell you that Cookie that you just interviewed is also going to be the featured quilter at our next quilt show in October of 2013. She's Whoa. quite a lovely quilter. Wow, that sounds like quite an honor. It is. It is. Okay, so you said that this one isn't eligible for entry this year because it was done a few years ago. Correct. I understand that one of the criteria is that it should be done this, this past year. Okay, so since the close of last year's fair... Mm -hmm. 
you can start working on that, and so it does need to be something that was made within the last 12 months. I believe so. Okay. Terrific. Well, make sure, everyone, you stop and look at this beautiful work that's done. Again, another one of those things outside of maybe what you think is all fun fair. There's some great talent in this community. Come in and make sure you, de you take a look at the things that are on display and in the competitions here to really get a feel for the entire fair and what it represents. Let's continue on. All right, well now we're over here in Benny Brown Arena, and a lot of activity happens in Benny Brown Arena every single night from the beginning of the fair to the end, and certainly this year is no exception. Oh, this is this arena is literally used every moment of the fair. But we can talk about our evening events. Uh, mutton busting will be on Thursday night at seven o'clock. If you haven't seen that, that is a treat to see. The little kids. This is for little kids. I think eight and under. Uh, there, we take all the safety precautions. They have a helmet and they have to have the proper safety gear. And they ride a, a sheep. And they'll ride that sheep for as long as they can. The winner of the of the mutton busting contest the top 10 kids get to go to the CCPRA rodeo finals on Saturday night okay now and that's a little change the way we've done it before up until last year or maybe it was the year before I think it was last year we used to you could submit your entries and then we would blindly pull names and those names would then be entered to ride during the rodeo there were so many kids that never had an opportunity to do this, and so many wanted to they do it. it I don't remember who it was, but somebody had the fabulous idea that on Thursday night we would open that up, and we would let the kids ride. As many that want to come and ride, within reason, I'm sure we can't go into uh, all night long, but you have an opportunity to ride. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Up until last year, or maybe it was the year before, I think it was last year, we used to, you could submit your entries and then we would blindly pull names and those names would then be entered to ride during the rodeo. There were so many kids that never had an opportunity to do this, and so many wanted to they do wanted it. In. I don't remember who it was, but somebody had the fabulous idea that on Thursday night we would open that up, and we would let the kids ride. As many that want to come and ride, within reason, I'm sure we can't go into uh, all night long, but you have an opportunity to ride. Uh, then they take the top qualifiers, is right. my understanding, yeah. from there, and the top ten will then get to ride for the Mutton Bustin' Championship of the 2012 Amateur County Fair. And I got to tell you, over the years, we've been doing this a lot of years, and those kids are awful proud of that award. Oh, my goodness. You know, they wear that belt buckle with pride. You know, it's a big deal. We, we might have 50 kids uh, entered in this thing, and it is just the, the most fun that you can probably have. And it's a free show on Thursday night right here in the Benny Brown Arena. Friday night, hot rod truck and tractor pulls right here, baby. Then it is fun. You're going to see some ground pounding action here with the with the big boys come out and uh, make a big noise and pull that sled. And we have a local competition. If you uh, got your own little four wheel drive, want to come out here and uh, test your skill with the rest. So that's always a big fun, and uh, that's a paid event. That'll cost you ten dollars to get in. Uh, tickets are online at Amador. Countyfair.com. Now, are there reserved seats for Friday night? Not for Friday night. Okay. Not for Friday night. Saturday night, we have our CCPRA rodeo. This is one of the finer rotary road. Rode rodeos. How's that such a hard word? Well, I think you got confused between you were going to say rodeo, rodeo. or rodeo. We'll kind go of like tomato or tomato, but that's okay. Go okay, ahead. Okay, we know what we're doing out here. So, uh, you know, that's another great event out here. The seats that uh, that's online at AmadorCountyFair.com, and there are reserved seats for that. Now, now, this reserve seat program we started a couple years ago, and you can get reserve seats not only for Saturday night for the rodeo, but as well for Sunday night for the Destruction Derby. Now, those of you who have been here before, the beauty of that, we always get a very, very large cloud for the rodeo and always sell out the derby. You can buy these tickets in advance. You can buy a reserve seat, which guarantees you a seat, unlike before when it was all general seating, when you needed to get in there an hour before the show even started. So this gives you an opportunity to stay on the grounds, enjoy the 
the fair, get your dinner, whatever the case may be, a cold beverage, and still know that you have that seat reserved whatever and whenever you get here. Exactly, and it is just so much fun. So we end the fair with a big crash and a cloud of smoke with the Demolition Derby out here. So great events in the arena every single night. And one of the things, we just got lucky. Uh, a little earlier we walked in here and there was a team uh, practicing their routine out here in the arena. And we got to um, watch that a little bit. And with me here is their leader somewhere. We're and we're going we're gonna to find her and we're going to talk to Ada just Schultz in just a just a minute. Let me grab her. She's out there instructing her kids, I believe, and that's what she does. So we're going to see if we can get Ada over here. Ada, can we have you? Uh, I know very little about this team with the exception of, I read about it in the paper, they went to a competition here down in the valley somewhere, series I believe maybe it was, and I believe they brought back uh, the championship or first place or whatever. Hi, Ada? Yes. How are you? I'm well. How good, are you? Good. Well, we're, we just feel so lucky that we came out here and your group was out there actually practicing. So tell us a little bit about who these kids are, what your group is, what they do. Okay, this is the Lawton Ranch Riders from Jackson um, over by Rayleigh's, the Lawton Ranch. Um, it's a junior team from ages 8 to 18. If you have your own horse, you can come out and ride. Or Some of the girls... Um, Ride Bobby's lease Bobby's horses. Out Don't there. be afraid. Just step I know, right I'm up so here. <laughs> I, hate, I hate being interviewed. That's okay. Um, and right now they're gearing up for the Coto Cup, which is down in Rancho Marietta on August 19th. Um, and we're also all these girls are going to be competing at fair. Oh, that's in terrific! Different During classes. different different classes the that actually start classes. on Wednesday, right? Yes, they'll be in their 4-H FFA Grange classes on Wednesday and English on Thursday. Uh, Western on Friday and cattle on Saturday. And this group right here, I was just mentioning, I read in our local paper here a few weeks ago, that they went into a competition somewhere, and from what I understand, they did pretty good. Yes, in May, they were in their first competition. They took first place in the novice division, and they also took fourth place out of five teams with four senior teams in a theme, like a fun division, where they got to wear costumes and stuff. Well, that's terrific, and also they're going to be helping us in the rodeo Saturday night. Is that correct? Yes, just Jeff Davis asked us um, uh, to come before the rodeo for a little entertainment. Oh, that's terrific. Jeff Davis is our contractor who we contract with for the rodeo. So this group is going to be out here and giving us a little pre-rodeo show. Yep. And we certainly look forward to that. And like I said, there are events going on here. The horse show starts on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They'll be out here. Don't miss Cattleman's Day, Saturday, where all our local cowboys come up and they do everything from penning to roping to branding. It's a great a day. It's a lot of fun coming out here and watching these local cowboys compete. They enjoy it. We enjoy it. So don't forget about that on Saturday. Uh, then Sunday, we have, what do we have here during the day on Sunday, Troy? I think we have more of the, the ranch events. Oh, that's on, right. Um, uh, we have the cutting on, on Sunday morning. That's correct. I've, how could I forget that? Wayne Havens, my dear friend, uh, uh, was uh, very involved in the cutting show, and that will happen Sunday. So events all five days actually with a horse show starting on Wednesday so make sure you stop by Benny Brown Arena to see all the great things that are happening out here uh, big events Friday and Saturday night you must have a ticket I suggest that you buy those early because uh, those Saturday, Saturday and Sunday for sure will sell out uh, we hope to see you here we're going to continue our little tour okay Troy now we're over in the barn area and obviously there's a lot of activities that that happen here starting on wednesday i believe when the kids start start showing is that correct well the kids will bring their livestock in on tuesday that's where we weigh them in get everybody pinned in settled down and then the uh, real action starts on wednesday where we start judging the hogs and then uh, all the animals are exhibited and you know what i think about what the fair does we grow leaders out here you know we talk to the miss amador uh, competition winner our scholarship winner and these kids here these are the kids who are going to be our future these are the kids who are going to be uh, our business leaders our civic leaders and this is where it all starts this is the best of the best right here you know, you know and, th and that's a good point and what people don't understand these kids that have these projects 
it is a responsibility, and I got to tell you, my son is involved, and you know, a lot of his friends sometime they're out swimming or they're doing this, but when you have an animal that you need to take care of and you need to exercise and you need to walk and you need to feed every morning and you need to weigh and feed every evening and go down and spray them off when it's too hot in the middle of the day. That responsibility really adds to a work ethic, I think, that, that these kids learn at an early age. And when you talk about building leaders, that is not a cliche. No, it, it's real and it's happening right here. These kids are the ones that you're going to want to look at. They're going to be heads and shoulders above their competition when, when they go into the marketplace with their skills. And, and they're just, it's, it's just such a, a powerful thing. These families, their, their commitment to their kids and what they do, and, and it, it really is the foundation of our community, I think, here in Amador County. Well, you know, we're very, very proud of our 4-H and FFA and Grange kids here that come and help participate in the fair every single year. And this county, year after year, has supported them tremendously. You know, everybody, and I, and I get it a lot, and I've had it over the last few years especially, only because of, you know, where we've kind of been at in, in, our, in our economy and that type of thing and the difficulties that state funding has gone through and with fairs. Everybody says, boy, how's your auction? Well, I can tell you that this county loves their kids and they participate and they support. They support to the tune of last year, we set a record. Oh, yeah. It was the largest junior livestock auction that we've ever had, and you know what? We really appreciate that. I know the kids really appreciate that, but you know what? This is another year, and we're looking to do it again, aren't we? Yes, we will, and I'm sure that it's going to be another record-breaking year. You know, this county invests in their young people, and, and it's on display right out here at the Amador County Fair. Well, we hope that you, everybody comes out Sunday. The auction starts at 10.30. 10.30. There is a, a pre-auction brunch for buyers where you can register and get your buyer number early over at 49er Trailer Village. Is that correct? Yes, sir. It's always a good place to start the day. You can have a little breakfast over there. You can get registered. And then everybody will come over here and get started for a sale at 10.30, which I'm sure will be a highlight of the fair, which it is always every single year. So come on by. And other than Sunday, but come by and check out the animals. The kids have other responsibilities out here too. It's once they show their animals, it's not all about corn dogs and candy, cotton candy. They need to clean those stalls every day. They need to make sure that they're clean early in the morning. These kids need to get up early, make sure they do their duties. They have barn duties. They're available to answer questions during the day. Yep, yep. If, if you come by and, and yep. want to know something about an animal, they're there to provide those answers for you. Sure. So come by, support those kids, and learn something about our local livestock. It's always a lot of fun. You bet it is. Okay, well, we will see you out here in the barn area. Uh, show starts on Wednesday and culminates with the auction that starts at 1030 on Sunday. We've got a couple other stops, so stay All with right. us. We're standing here right in the middle of the Midway, in the midst of our beautiful flower garden, which line the Midway, which, again, look absolutely beautiful again this year. Behind us is Frontier Town. We're right next to the food court. There's all kinds of things that are happening all around us, Troy. I'm thinking this might be where all the action is. You know, we've got our Frontier Town here. You might get involved with a little shootout if you're not careful out here. Uh, the Kit Carson Mountain Men have their encampment out there. There's vendors back in there. You can uh, do a little shopping and have some fun. See our uh, our wheelwright, our, our blacksmith shop. This is the real deal. This is all the real thing out here. You're seeing the real stuff out here. And you know, part of that Frontier Town, those of you who have been maybe listening to our local radio station, KVGC, one of the fun things things they do every year is Fairfax. Fair fun fact. And one of them that I heard, I believe maybe it was last week, was about Frontier Town and how that actually started. Gula Waite was quite the power in, uh, quite a talented woman here. She was, I think... You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN power in uh, quite a talented woman here. She was, I think, probably one of the first fair man female fair managers in, our, in the network of California fairs. Uh, but she had this vision to create a frontier town. She went out in the 60s and was able to get all of these uh, buildings and have them relocated and, and rebuilt and, and put in here. As much as anybody, Gula Waite has created the look and feel of the Amador County Fair. And the idea was to take a big 
building from the different communities around the mm -hmm. county, whether it be incorporated cities or unincorporated areas, and try to put the facades at least, or the look-alike, to create this frontier town to give you a feel and a sample of the entire community. Was that right? Absolutely. You know, and it represents the families who built Amador County. You have the Begovich Boarding House, the Valva uh, Barber Shop, the Viara uh, Blacksmith Shop. So these are all real families who, who helped grow and cr uh, build Amador County. Right. And then right in the middle here, then we have our food uh, area. Uh, food concession area where uh, almost all of the concessionaires in this area are local nonprofits. Is that correct? Yeah, this is uh, the fair is a big fundraiser for the for most of the uh, non for profits in the county. So you have the the Rotary Steak Sandwich booth. The wrestling team does their fundraising out here with the hamburger stand. Uh, it's just a wonderful place for the community to come out here, raise a little money. Get involved with the Amador County Fair and kind of show off a little bit to the community. So a wonderful area. Everybody that comes here knows the area we're standing at right now. We're surrounded by a lot of activity that happens from opening to close. And so I know if you come to the Amador County Fair, you're probably going to be standing right here where I am. We're just about done. We're moving to the front. We're getting close. We'll be back. All right. Right here, we're in, in front of one of my favorite friends. This is Russell. Russell the steam engine. Our logo here at the Amador County Fair it shows both of us on our shirts. What can you tell us about this old boy? This is a circa 1918 engine. It's a steam engine. Uh, it was used throughout the county from Ione to the Omo Ranch. Uh, they used to haul it. Uh, it's a horse-drawn engine and they would have all the various equipment to it, the belts and stuff to, to for pumps, for uh, sawmills, for uh, grain thrashers. You know, it was used in a lot of different ways. They just hook up different different implements to it, and uh, it worked all up around the county. And it was retired here, and has been here for uh, a very long time. I'm not sure how long. But yeah. So this is not a tractor. No. This is a steam engine that would pull by horses that right. powered equipment all over the county. All over the county. Yeah. You know, and this goes back to, you know, what we do here at the Amador County Fair. You know, a lot of the technology that was developed and built for agriculture in California was was showcased at these fairs all across the state. And this is this is what's going on here. Well, right here we're standing by Russell, but we're also standing by another area we have yet to talk about. And of course, something that people look forward to coming in a big part of a fair every year is our carnival and of course we have Kenny here with Carnivals of Fun again who has been our carnival provider for a number of years we certainly appreciate him and everything he's done for us over the years but this is where the carnival takes place and as you can see he's already here starting to set things up moving equipment in for an orderly uh, uh, I don't know. For fun. For you know, he's got a brand new orbiter that he's bringing in. He's really pretty proud of it. And, and, and Kenny's kind of an interesting guy. He was one of the originators, uh, creators of the Gravitron. And if you haven't had been on one of those, you haven't experienced a carnival at ride at the fair. So uh, It is one I have not been on. <laughs> and uh, I have to say that I don't plan on going You're on it this year that. either. Well, it's, it's fun. I mean, it's just uh, it's a different experience. Have you been on? Uh, yes, sir, I have once. Uh, do you I plan did. on? going no, on sir. it twice. Uh, but I, no. No. no I'm not going to do that. <laughs> well, there are a lot of brave souls out there, much younger than I, uh, that I'm sure enjoy the Graviton. And there again, speaking of the carnival, you can buy pre-sale tickets. Pre -sale Is that correct? Tickets. Oh, yeah. Get your wristbands early, and it's a great bargain. You can get the wristband, and the kids can ride and just have a great time, and you can just kind of get a discount, and it's AmadorCountyFair.com, a great opportunity. You know, and while we're at it, you know, there's a lot of free things that happen here at the fair. We talked about the 49er Kids Town. We talked about the uh, our stages. You know, we have the bandstand stage back behind me. It's got some great talent on there, some local talent. Uh, Aaron McKinney Band frees out for a couple. Uh, our Budweiser stage down there by the livestock area. We're using a lot of, of really good local talent. Um, 
it's just a, a great opportunity. The whole community comes out here and participates one way or another. And then, of course, we have our traveling talent that goes up and down the midway. That that is so much fun. Some of the some of the entertainers we've had here in the past. The guy last year was just absolutely hilarious. Who I, I, I can't even think of his name. You probably can remember that kept changing the masks and everything in the different uh, in, in the different musics that he kept playing. Skip the balloon man. Skip the balloon Skip man. Skip the balloon man, and he's going to be back again. Oh, I'm <laughs> telling you, folks, if you miss Skip the balloon man. And you just want to laugh? You have to watch one of his shows. Oh, he'll, you'll notice him. You'll find his show. He usually finds a nice spot out here and and uh, does a, just a hilarious show. It's just a too much fun. Clowns blowing up balloons for the kids, whatever it may be. A lot of fun events going on. Let's shift gears. Right when you come in through the main entrance, just to the right past the office, is our KVGC. Um, hometown radio uh, area, and they've got a few things different going on there this year. KVGC, the mighty KVGC 1340 on the AM dial, they were, uh, help us out a, a lot. You know, we talked about the Fairfax that they're doing. You can tune in. You can get them online if you don't get their signal from Amador County. Uh, but just, you know, he just does, a, Jim Geedy just does a great, uh, great, job of telling the story of Amador County Fair. He does a lot of the uh, entertainment, the um, diaper derby, for instance, and the pie-eating contests and, and those kind of things Jim does. So, And another thing this year, uh, this being our 74th year, we're really excited and looking forward to 75 years. Uh, Mary Cowan will be doing, uh, collecting the, the uh, the history, the living history of, of the families who helped build this fair. And that'll be at the KVGC booth, too. So what what she's doing is actually, this is, everybody can participate in this. Longtime families that have been involved with this fair for a long time. We're looking for old pictures, memorabilia, something that helps capture part of the 75 years that this fair has been in existence. And we're starting to collect that now, Mary is. And uh, there will be an opportunity that if you have something like that, you you can actually bring it and drop it off there uh, to Mary at the, at the KVGC booth right when you come in through the main entrance. Yeah, and uh, you know, so many families have, have for generations been part of this fair, and, and it's just a, it's going to be a great story to be told. Barn in the USA. <laughs> you know, you talk about families, you talk about all the volunteers. This fair happens because of the volunteers. This fair happens because the people in this community continue to believe that it is important and that it is special. So let me just take a minute to thank all of you because this really is about our community, but it really takes all of you to help us. Tell somebody. I ask that all of you who have been to the fair be an ambassador for this fair and make sure you talk to people who have never been here and never had the experience to get them out here to enjoy this fair. Be our ambassador. Like I said, come out here. Come early, come often, stay late, July 26th through the 29th. We're coming right up. We hope to see you here. Thanks for watching Barn in the USA 2012. Thank you so much. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Amador This Week's Out and About has been proudly brought to you by Jackson Rancheria Casino Re